Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel for another Project Zomboid video. I've been getting a few questions lately about fishing, trapping, and foraging, just generally the survival skills in Project Zomboid, so I figured it's about time that I do a couple of videos just explaining how these work, with an emphasis on how to get the very best out of these gathering methods, using information available on other platforms, and my experience in-game. If you find this video useful, go ahead and drop it a like, and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. I also stream on Twitch almost every day, so if you've got more questions or want to watch some Project Zomboid live, you can swing by at twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Atomic Duck. So, trapping is a survivalist skill in Project Zomboid that involves catching and butchering wild animals in order to survive. It's incredibly useful and often a necessity when surviving past the electricity shutoff point in any Project Zomboid playthrough, as you'll ideally want to have plenty of meat to combine with vegetables and fruits that you'll likely be growing through farming. But, like with anything in Project Zomboid, there's often a best way to get things done, and trapping is no exception to that rule. So let's start off with the types of traps that you can build, and which ones will get you the best results. When you first start off with trapping at zero skill points in the tree, you'll be able to craft either a stick trap or a trap crate. Now, stick traps will catch small birds, and the trap crate will catch either rabbits or squirrels, depending on the bait used. Which one you're going to want to use will obviously depend on what bait you have to hand at the time. But if you can, I would always recommend the trap crates to get started. Rabbits are the ideal animal you want to catch as they are usually the largest and provide the most meat. It's important to note however that the trap crates have a 30% chance of catching an animal, whereas the stick traps have a 40% chance of catching. So the stick traps will catch animals all day long as well, whereas the trap crates will only catch animals between 7pm and 5am. This is when squirrels and rabbits are active. So it's up to you which one you use and maybe if you need food on a moment's notice you can try the stick traps but I personally always go for the trap crates for the bigger catches and to be honest if you're checking a trap every day it really makes no difference. Now if you're looking to bait up a stick trap to catch some birds the best bait available is either worms or bread. On the Project Zomboid wiki which I'll leave a link for in the description of this video each type of bait has a number assigned as a rating of its effectiveness when used to catch a particular animal. Bread, bread slices and worms all have a number value of 50 when applied to catching birds. Alternatively, corn or cereal works as a good secondary option with a value of 45. With the trap crate, the best possible bait is carrots at a value of 45. Cabbages come second at a value of 40 alongside peppers and lettuce. There's several other options with a value of 35. If you're unable to get your hands on any of the previously mentioned veggies, potatoes and tomatoes for example, which can be grown at your base if you don't have cabbage or carrots. Seeds. So these are the two traps you'll be starting with. Now we've got to talk about where you're going to put them. Firstly, you want to make sure that there are at least 75 tiles from where you decide to make your base within that space and your traps won't catch anything. It's all down to where the player is at the time so try not to put them near any area that you would frequently travel through either. When it comes to catching rabbits or squirrels the best place to put them is in the deep forest areas. For birds, farms or towns actually have the highest chance to catch but honestly if you are catching birds placing them with your other traps might just be easier and more efficient. So those are your starter traps and how to use them for the best results. Crafting the higher level traps requires some skill in trapping which can be gained naturally by catching animals via the trapping process and it can be sped up by reading through the beginner trapping guide which will multiply the XP that you gain. You can also gain a hefty amount of XP if you manage to find the book before day six in your survival playthrough as this is when the episode of Exposure Survival will play that specifically references trapping. Tune a TV to the Life and Living channel and catch the show at 6pm. It'll give you a huge amount of XP if you can read the appropriate book before this point. Lastly, keep an eye out for some magazines called The Hunter. They will teach you additional crafting recipes for better traps. There are three of these in total. Now, just there I mentioned that those recipes will teach you how to build the better traps, and once you've learned those other recipes, you might be tempted to start building them, but this segment of the video might make you think twice about that. It's honestly quite surprising how the traps stack up against each other when you compare them directly. So here's some general statistics about the trap crate you'll know from the get-go. It has 15 strength, which is essentially its HP, before being destroyed. It has a 30% chance of catching either rabbits or squirrels. Now, a snare trap, which requires one trapping or knowledge of the recipe through other means, only has 10 strength, but its chance of catching an animal is exactly the same 
same as a trap crate, so there's really no point using it at all. The trap box, which requires two trapping and one carpentry, or knowledge of the recipe through other means like we just said, has the same strength as the trap crate, so that's 15 strength in total, but it also has the same 30% chance of catching a rabbit, but 5% less chance of catching a squirrel. So again, there's really no point in using these for that reason. In fact, the only trap that's actually worth using over the trap crates you get from the beginning are the cage traps. These are metal in structure and have 20 strength for that reason. It catches at the same rates as the trap crate, however, there's still 30% for squirrels and rabbits, so it's not that big of an upgrade and it requires level 3 trapping to create. All of this information comes straight from the Project Zomboid wiki, so if these are indeed the right figures, I definitely think there's some of these that could use some tweaking in the future to make later trapping methods more worthwhile learning. But anyway, that's how it stands at present. Before we wrap up this video, I did just want to mention a couple of general tips for trapping that might prove useful for you. Firstly, try to check on your traps regularly. I do this once a day where possible. Once an animal is in the trap, it can attract nearby zombies, so you'll want to check them regularly to avoid them being destroyed by said zombies. Traps can also break naturally over time, so checking regularly will mean that they don't stay that way for too long before you come back and repair them. When it comes to baiting your traps, each time you bait a trap, you will remove minus five hunger from the item, so keep that in mind when you're deciding how much bait to bring with you. I'd also recommend finding a yourself an ice freezer if you can once you start looking into trapping. They have 60 units of storage total and believe me when I say that you'll need it once you start both farming and trapping. The more food you can freeze for later the better. Finally try to make sure that you're doing some farming alongside trapping or fishing is going to give you the best results when combining items into a food recipe. That's all for me in this one guys but thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.